No, I wouldn't say I was totally traditional, semi, if you can say that. Um, when I go out, I find something that catches my attention and I'm kind of like doing some preliminary sketches for about an hour and having a wander around and having a good look. Uh, but then I'll take some photographs, then I'll come back and it's just a case of like filling in the pieces, like doing a jigsaw. And that's pretty much my process. Exploring aged rural Japanese architecture that is no longer useful, that now just stand as monuments of social history. Uh, in the past year, I've I've come across some pretty spectacular ruins hidden in the Saitama landscape. Fortunately, I've been able to record some of them, but they're not going to be around for much longer. For some years I had been recording all kinds of architecture in Tokyo in the form of old houses, share houses, shops and bars but without any direction really. But I guess that was the stimuli for this project. When I moved from Tokyo to Saitama I just became inspired by the natural environment. For me, living in uncharted, spacious and rural surroundings just motivated me more. If I were to select a few visual artists that have dramatically captured uncharismatic and unfriendly looking architecture and environments in their work, then I'd point to George Shaw's Drawings of Tile Hill, a painting by Judith Tucker titled Once Was Holiday, and Laura Oldfield Ford's dystopian scenes of the London suburbs. The explorations tie in with another interest of mine, cyclogeography. That way I'm able to get around and explore with more mobility and freedom, and by doing so I gain a greater geographical sense of the area too. That's important for me. Usually I just choose one small district or even a road within the prefecture. It's surprising what you can unexpectedly find or stumble across within that boundary. That is the exciting part. 